Hello. This video is going to show how we can use the Eldray tool suite with the GNU compiler for a PowerPC target and running all this on the Wind River Simix. Now, the starting point is analysing the code that I'm interested in. I've already done that to save time and here we can see that I have a, a simple project with a number of source files and I've analysed this against a particular coding standard which was the Misra C 2012. Let's do a, a code review and see, ah, in this particular case we have no violations. Our code is compliant to Misra C 2012. Well, if I switch the violations that I've excluded on, we can see the code was compliant, but I have a number of violations that I've justified. Some of these justi justifications were done inside the code. And here we can see that I've put a justification tag into the code to effectively exclude this particular violation. And here I've got my justification. Another way of doing the justification is by using an external any file. And that's what I've done here, where I've basically used this particular any file and I've added all my justifications into here using regular expressions in order to be able to locate the violations. OK, so that's the first thing. My code here, as we've seen, is compliant to Misra. But is it good quality? Well, let's take a look. Let's go and open a system core graph. And a system core graph is going to allow us to understand how all these functions are interconnected. And we can put this into various different modes. I can put it into a clarity mode, where I'm able to see things like uh, depth of loop nesting, how many comments do I have associated with each function, and you can see everything here is green, everything is, is good. If I take a look at, an, uh, this is the maintainability, and this is allowing us to see metrics such as the psychomatic complexity. In this particular case, we can sort and rapidly find the most complex function, which is this one. Well, let's take a, a look at that as a flow graph, so we can see a graphical representation of the flow inside this function. Now, what's this block here? Well, let's click on it and we can see the corresponding block over here. Let's click on this block and we can see the corresponding block over here in the flow graph. This is very useful for understanding uh, the flow of our uh, function here. OK, let's close that down. So, for the moment, I'm pretty happy that my code is compliant to Misra. It's good quality. Now what I want to do is I want to execute the code. And if I execute the code, we can see that my main is simply going to invoke all my functions at least once, and hopefully I'm going to get some pretty reasonable coverage from that. So let's go and execute this on the uh, Simix environment. So to do that, I'm simply going to press this button here, and this is now going to instrument the source code, putting probes basically around all the branches. It's just used the uh, GNU compiler to build it. It then executed it using Simix, and as we saw, Simix is, is very fast. And we've now got the results back from the target. We're analyzing those, updating a number of reports, and then we'll be able to see, well, how much coverage did we actually obtain? So once again, let's go to a system call graph. OK, and this time on the system call graph, we're going to be able to put this into a, a view where we can see coverage. And as we can see green, we have 100% coverage for some of these functions. But some other functions, we don't have 100% coverage. Once again, we can sort and we can find there is the safe sprintf function. So we don't have a 100% statement branch or MCDC. Well, let's take a look at our flow graph and see what coverage we did obtain. So once again, let's just maximize this. And there we can see we have a number of, of branches that haven't been executed. So it looks like I've never executed this code with format equal to, to, to null. And I've not executed this bit of code either because I've never had a format equal to null or string equal to null. And we've got a, another branch here and a block and again, I'm not sure why we haven't executed that, but what I could do is I could create some unit tests which would then exercise this part of the code. So let's go and do some unit testing. OK, so from TB Vision, we will now go to TB Run. And TB Run is our unit testing tool. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a sequence that I've previously created. And so I've got a folder here with all my low level tests. And there's the test for the safe sprintf. Let's open this. And what we're going to find is we have a number of test cases here. Well, let's just run this. OK, it needs to do a bit more instrumentation. And for each of these individual tests, we can see we have inputs and then most importantly, the ex expected outputs. So that's now built the harness. It's just executed it again using Simix. We're getting the results back. And what we should find is our coverage is going to increase from what we had previously. And we should end up with a 100% statement, branch and MCDC. So just wait for that to finish updating the various reports. And there we can see we have indeed got 100% statement coverage, branch coverage and MCDC coverage. So what actually happened? Well, let's go and run this, this time in a, a debug mode. And then we can see what's happening inside Simix. So this time I'm going to run and it's going to generate the harness. It's built it. Now we're invoking Simix. So we just need to wait for this to initialize and then we'll be able to, to see how this is all working and we'll be able to single step through the test cases and see what's happening. Right, so this is Simix and as we can see I have a number of, of projects here that I've created but the one that we're using at the moment is this one. And inside here, we can see we have a number of low level tests. This is the one that we're running at the moment. We also have our source code. And we should also have a number of targets. So these are all the Simix targets. And the one we're using at the moment is this QSP PowerPC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and invoke a or create a new Simix session. OK, so that's the project that we're working with. And that's the target system that I'm interested in. And here we have the script that I want to run. So we've got this script that we executed automatically. And this one just runs. This is the one that's going to pause and allow us to debug. So that's the one we want to run. OK, so that's switched to the, the debug view. And as we can see, we've started the execution and we've halted inside the main. So now I'm going to be able to start single stepping through. So let's step over this. And as we can see, we can step through and I'm going to get come into my test cases. We can step into those. And as you can see, I could now continue to, to debug this. And if a test was not working, I'd be able to understand why it wasn't working. All right, so that's enough there. Let's stop this, close this down, and let's come back to TB run. And finally, let's just generate a, a test. OK, so this is the test manager report. And as we can see, first of all, our code is compliant to the Misra C 2012 standard. It's also good quality. So our code is testable, maintainable and clear. We also have coverage. So we executed the code. And as we can see, we've got pretty reasonable statement, branch and MCDC coverage. And we ran one unit test for the safe sprintf had 13 test cases, they've all passed. And if we take a look at the coverage for the safe sprintf, we can see we've got the dynamic analysis run and the unit testing run that has given us the coverage. We can see here the safe sprintf, we have a 100% statement branch and MCDC. And we go in, we can see that with the dynamic analysis, we didn't get coverage for these lines of code, but with the unit testing, we did. And so we have the combined coverage that we want. So if you want more information, then please don't hesitate to, to contact us. Thank you.